Hello all, and welcome to the App Up Show for Developers live webinar show. I'm your host, Bob Duffy. And I'm your co-host, Rhonda Peters. I'm so excited today, Bob, because we are live. This is our first webinar, and looks like we have some Intel engineers who are up for the challenge. Yeah, that's right, Rhonda. We've got Daniel here. We have Ujwal. I mean, Daniel's going to uh, take some time and, and talk to us about HTML5, let people know how HTML5 works with our program, uh, and also discuss some of the articles that uh, we're soon to have on the site. And then Ujwal is going to give us a look at Encapsulator in a cool feature um, about local storage. So we have a new API that allows you to do some like local storage, and Ujwal will walk us through that. Well, before we get going with them, um, I want to take this time for both of us to kind of get our hands dirty a little bit and show our audience how to build an app with one of our tools called the Intel App Up Creator. And between each of the segments as we move through this webinar, we'll have some poll questions. Uh, so for those of you out there in webinar land, we'd like for you to get ready to um, answer some of these questions. And also feel free to use the chat function that we have within the tool. So if you have any questions, um, you can submit those via chat or via the questions tab as well. Good deal. So let's get to our first segment. It's an app up roundup. And we're going to be talking about app up creator. And we're going to build an app live here. Uh, so let me go ahead and switch over to the web. So. Rana, you're going to help me build this app. And uh, we're going to use Creator. So for those of the, uh, you who have not seen Creator, you can get to it by going to uh, appdeveloper.intel.com slash creator. And you'll get to this nice page here. And then you can click this link to launch uh, Intel App Up Creator Beta, which takes you to the App Up Creator tool, which is an online tool. So this is pretty cool. Um, you can uh, simply drag and drop widgets here on the left side of the page um, over here to the right to this uh, sample uh, notebook computer. And then you can edit those widgets, and you can add personalization, and then build an app. Yeah, that's really cool. That looks very simple, <laughs> something that I could do. Yeah, I, in fact, we're going to do it right now, Rhonda. So let me walk people through this. Um, really quickly. There are just some simple controls that you have here. Um, you can select the device type. Right now I have it set to netbook. You could also say so set it to tablet for uh, 12, uh, uh, 1024 by 600 screen. If you had it on tablet, you could change your orientation uh, for the app that you're building and such. So we're going to use netbook, 1024 by 600. And I thought we'd create uh, an, an app for our own show here. Oh, cool. So, so let's select some of these things. So uh, let, let's uh, add in, uh, let's say, a Twitter widget. And let's have them search for Intel App Up's a little bit boring. How about we search for Bob Duffy or From the Fab? I'll put an E. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> or wrap up. That way they get you know all the cool Twitter updates from us. That um, is cool. So, yeah, and they're cool. So already we can see people tweeting about us. Um, and let's add in a Facebook app as well. We just simple drag and drop that in there. That's already set to the app up developer program. What else should we add, Rhonda? Um what's going on on our YouTube? Alrighty. Let's throw that one in there. Let's look for the app up show specifically. How's that? Okay, cool. There are all is, our lovely app up show videos. Is there a way to kind of zoom in? I know we got the webinar. Is there a way to kind of make this bigger? Well, you know, you could change the resolution um, of the device that you've got. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can also go to this preview here and see exactly how this looks. We return to design mode here. But if you want, I could uh, make my screen larger. I just don't know exactly what okay. screen resolution people have as they're viewing here on the web. So let me uh, let me do well, that. 
one quick question. What I see on your screen here that you have a Zoom at the top left. Would that would that work? Where it says. Uh. All right, there we go. There's a new ah. trick that I hadn't even seen before. Um, okay, so there we are. Um, our, our, our beautiful app is coming into view. But let's do some customization. And here's a, a trick that I learned is we can change the size of the set of widgets here. I'm going to go ahead and move that down. So uh, I can do some personalization above uh, the, the feeds that we have. Let me go ahead and add in a photo here. I'm going to go ahead and, and change the source of this. And look for, oops, there we go. Great. There we are. Just size this to fit. And there we go. Hey. All right. Like so, yeah. So I, I think we have a pretty good looking app here right now. So um, let's go ahead and uh, test it out. We can go here to preview. We can test each of these things. And then if we clicked on the links here, uh, those would take us then to the pages like this would take us to the YouTube video, et cetera. Okay. So, let me return to design mode. After you get done testing your app and it's, it's the way you'd like it, um, you can then go ahead um, and do a formal test on your PC. And this is going to create a test package for you. Essentially what it's going to do is it's going to use Encapsulator to automatically package this application for you uh, as a desktop application. And it will provide you, oops, oh, oh well. I thought I had this pre-baked, but it doesn't look like I do. Um, what it will create is a Windows MSI, which is an installer for you, um, or it will create a Mego Netbook RPM, which is an installation file for Mego as well. So when you create test package, it's going to go ahead and start building this, but it will take about two minutes, which is probably more than we want to do in this segment. And so there you go. Yeah, that, that's it. It's essentially you drag and drop your stuff on the screen, um, you, know, you create your test package, and then you can go through the process of publishing. You just follow the steps to create an ID for a program, and then go ahead and upload the file that you created to the AppUp Developer Program. Wow. So, so with this tool, um, typically developers, you know, go through a validation state. So does publishing automatically put the app in the store or is there some validation that happens after you click the publish? Yeah, that, it, that's what's going to happen. When you click, uh, click publish, it's going to give you a series of steps that you need to take in order to first um, and, uh, join and enroll into the program. And then it will take you to uh, uh, an area of the website that allows you to then submit the app. And once that app is submitted, it goes through validation and then that will take typically um, five to seven business days. Oh wow! I mean that that that's just awesome. I I love it because um, the fact that we meet so many people that are always talking about they're wanting to get into the app space, just like we were just at the Sprint conference and we met some interesting people from education, academia, and things like that, and and they got really stoked about this for you know using it in the classroom environment. Yeah, I, I think there are a lot of untapped uh, usage models for this, lots of features, and um, obviously this will evolve and improve um, more uh, user experience designs in, in terms of what that app will look like. Those will be coming, as well as we know that um, more widgets will also be coming, so more than just uh, these set of widgets that you can drag and drop in, into your app. So the bottom line is uh, we want people to use the tool, give us feedback, uh, test it out, and, and stay tuned for uh, more features to come. That's right. So there you have it, folks. That's uh, App Up Creator. Please give it a shot. Um, let us know uh, what you like about it um, and help us improve it so it becomes a rich experience for the program. But now it's poll time, Rhonda, and I think you've got a question for our audience. All right, I do. So our first poll question is, 
what additional features would you like to see for App of Creator? Now that you've gotten a, a brief overview just a second ago, uh, take a moment and vote what you would like to see. Do you want to see better app design, templates or themes, more content widgets, more developer tools, or maybe not interested? So I'll give you guys a few minutes. Yeah, there's a lot, that, a lot of potential with this, and I, I know that we've talked about this internally in terms of, you know, expanding the themes and the templates that people can have, as well as uh, the kinds of widgets. So it'd be real interesting to see what folks think. All right. Okay. Just a few more, few more seconds, and then I'll close. All right. So basically here what we did see is that it looks like about equal on more content widgets and more developer tools. That's what most people are looking for. Let's see if we could share that here. Can you guys see that? All right. Fantastic. Okay. All right, Bob, let's uh, move on to our next segment. Okay, next segment is Code Up segment, and we have Daniel Holland here, and he's going to talk about HTML5 for App Up. So uh, welcome, Daniel. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. So I appreciate you taking the time to speak to our audience about HTML5. I'm just going to go ahead and move right to the first slide for you, and you can take it away. Okay, sounds good. So HTML5 is uh, the direction that the App Up program is beginning to move in. And HTML5 right now is hot in the industry. So you think that these two are hot, go into that cloud. HTML5 is being supported by Android, iOS, Google, Facebook, Intel, Adobe, Opera, basically players all throughout the industry. And it's a common runtime probably the first time a common runtime has run across all the devices that are being made by these different players. So Intel is specifically interested in supporting HTML5 technology because we have a vested interest in optimizing HTML5 experiences on uh, the processors that we sell and for uh, driving the next generation of web application technologies. So what I came here today to talk to you about was basically how the the App Up program is uh, pushing towards HTML5 applications and how we are going to be uh, re releasing both tools and documentation in the near future to help developers create HTML applications. So right now we have the encapsulator tool. Do you want me to switch to another slide or are we still good on this yeah. one? Actually, right now, HTML5 games uh, are starting to make their appearance on the web. And HTML5 differs from HTML4 in a, a fairly fundamental way. HTML4 was more of a document-oriented markup, whereas HTML5 shifts the, the philosophy behind it and becomes more of an application-level markup. So you can create rich experiences with, with transitions and animations and gradients and real-time user feedback. And here are just some of the examples that I can put on a single slide of games that have made made in HTML5. But if you look on the web, there are hundreds of games that are being made in HTML5. And people are doing very creative things with it. So the first one we have here is a recreation of Pac-Man done by Google. This was one of their Google Doodles about uh, a year or so ago. And then we have Avis, which is a simulation game. Avis. And uh, then Z-Type, which is a game that teaches people to type by shooting down enemies. So these are just examples of things that you can do. HTML5 isn't a document-oriented uh, markup, but you can really create rich user experiences in it. And of course, we have the 
encapsulator tool. Uh, next slide. It just takes a little while to load on your side that's there. Okay. So I, I think that you've heard about the encapsulator tool before. This is a tool that will take a web page and it downloads the content from the web page, creates a, a WebKit based view, and bundles that up into an application. So you as a developer, all you need to be able to do is to create a web page and display it, and then Encapsulator goes through the trouble of taking that web page and converting it into a, uh, an executable that you can in install, uninstall, and sell on the App Up Market, App Up Center. So it creates both MSI installers and Mego installers. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about was we're starting to prepare a series of documentation specifically designed towards HTML5 and Intel App Up Encapsulator. And we have a series of articles that are going to be coming out shortly that will help you create cool experiences that all work inside, inside the encapsulator. And we're also um, interested in getting feedback from you about what sort of things you'd like to see talked about. Uh, what sort of development would you like to see articles and documentation come out on? Right now we're exploring HTML5, things such as gradients, uh, the new web forms, animations. Um, we're talking about audio and video components and how you can bundle these into your application uh, and deliver it over the web and over uh, uh, to the App Up Center. So I'd love to hear your feedback. Write the show and tell us what you'd like to see in terms of uh, HTML5 documentation. Thank you, Bob. Daniel, just a real quick yeah. question. Will many of these articles have the actual code samples that uh, developers could um, uh, use and try out? Yeah, so these, these articles are all focused on uh, task-oriented um, uh, objectives. So if you want to uh, build a, a animation in your application that does something in particular, what our articles do is they start with the idea that we want to accomplish something in HTML5, and then they go through and show in the code how to do that. So they're all very, they're very um, use case oriented, uh, and they give a lot of code to show how to do. Uh, HTML5 programming. Nice. And so we should look forward to these what, in the next week or two? Uh, or, or, or coming two towards or the end of the year? Yeah, pr probably probably before before the end of the year. Okay. Well, fantastic. I, do have one, I do have one question that came through. Uh, why is HTML5 better than a native Qt app? HTML5 has got a couple of advantages over a, a native, they're asking Qt in particular? Yes. So if you look at CSS3, CSS3 actually has a lot of commonalities with, um, with uh, QML, which is the Qt scripting language. But in particular, HTML5 has very wide industry support. You can deploy your HTML5 application on uh, a myriad of devices both powered by, by Intel Atoms processors, by Android devices, iOS devices. You can also uh, take that same code base and make it run on desktop machines. So there's a lot of advantages to having a broad industry support uh, for, your, for your languages. Great question. Okay, well, thank you, Daniel. We, we really appreciate you taking the time uh, walking us through um, our beginnings into HTML5 here, and we look forward to that documentation coming online. Thank you, Bob and Rhonda. All right. So, so another poll. Uh, another poll question. Do you think that HTML5 is a good solution for cross-platform development? Yes, no, or not sure? So if you guys take a moment to uh, give us your feedback. And as well, if you guys do have uh, more comments and questions, please feel free to add them into the chat. And uh, we'll do our best, as Ron has been doing, to try to uh, get those answered.
Yeah, I have a couple in, in the queue that I'm, I'm getting, trying to get assigned here. And uh, so in keeping with the time so that we can stay on schedule with the next topic, uh, we'll try to get those on the end. If not, we're definitely going to address those. Good deal. So we've got a few, few more seconds. All right, so we're going to close that. And here are the results. So 75% says yes. HTML5 is a good solution for cross-platform development. All right. All right. How feedback. many? I, I can't quite see that because my, my screen is sharing. How many people said no? Oh, okay. Sorry about that. 13% uh, said no, and then another 13% were uh, not sure. Uh-huh. Good deal. Well, for those who don't believe it's a good cross-platform and not sure, please stay tuned. Please engage with us, and uh, we'll do our best to help you understand how HTML5 can be used for cross-platform development. All right. Now back to you, Bob. Okay. I notice it takes a little while as I switch screens here for it actually to get out uh, to the web to everybody, so I'll try to stay in front of that. So um, our next segment is a review of Encapsulator, and specifically we're going to be talking about the advantages of our new local storage uh, API. So um, we have Ujjal with us, who is uh, another what we call TME, which is uh, an engineer here supporting the program. So uh, Ujjal, uh, welcome to uh, the webinar. Thank you, Bob. Um, good morning. Uh, my name is Ujwal, and I am a software engineer with the Apple team. Um, Daniel just showed us why HTML5 is hot. Now let's uh, see how you can use um, a cool feature of HTML5 uh, at the local storage uh, in your web application and make it hotter that can be submitted to Intel Encapsulator. So what is local storage? Well, local storage allows a web application to store data locally instead of the server. Well, why would we need to store data locally? As we all know, HTTP is a stateless protocol. Web applications have to either store session or state information on the server. Procuring data from the server may not be useful for certain web applications. And it's much easier if, a, if the data is stored locally. Uh, well, don't we have cookies that do exactly that? Yes, cookies do help, but they have limitations. Uh, cookies have a maximum storage size of 4 kilobytes. Um, end users can disable cookies. That is the reason why uh, HTML file local storage is better. And it's fun to use, and it's very easy. Uh, how does local storage store data? Local storage uh, stores data as a key value pair and can store data up to a size of 5 megabytes. Uh, the other thing to remember about local storage is local storage is domain specific. So web applications cannot read or modify data stored by an application from a different domain. Well, that's really good because that gives us a sense of security and your applications are a rogue application, web application cannot access your data stored in the local storage. Uh, let's look at some of the API definitions that will help store, retrieve, remove, clear data from the local uh, storage. The first thing we want to do is store a value. So the, the API for that is local storage dot set item. It takes a couple of arguments as a key and value pair. Then you, you would ob obviously want to retrieve stored data. How would you retrieve? Uh, you would use a local storage dot get item. What does the get item do? A get item takes in a argument that's the key as an argument and uh, outputs the value associated with the key and that is stored in the database. How do you remove a value? Well, local storage dot remove item would take in a key as an argument and remove the key value pair from the local storage. Sometimes you would want to clear the whole database. Um, then you would use local storage dot clear and this would only clear uh, the data that is stored by your web application because it's domain specific. So let's look in detail how to use um, one, some of the APIs. Um, here you can see that uh, you basically what this code tells you is 
this is checking whether local story is supported by your web runtime or a browser. So this is doing error handling. Um, here you can see the, the key is 1000 and the value uh, is the actual value 1000 in uh, an integer. You check whether window.localStory actually exists. If, it's, if it exists and is supported, then you call localStories.setItem. You can either call window.localStories.setItem or just call localStories.setItem. Both are fine. And you enter the key value pair. In case it's not supported, you can handle the error case and do something uh, uh, and throw an error. But encapsulator supports local trade, so you should not encounter the issue with encapsulator. Well, can you go to the next um, slide? Next slide tells us how to retrieve a value. Again, a similar, similar error handling is if window.localStory is not defined, you throw an exception. If it's defined, you retrieve the value of 1,000. 1,000 is a key here. So one thing to remember here is both the key value pairs are stored as strings. They're not stored as um, any other data type. So in your web application, you need to remember what the data type is, the native primitive data type is, and convert it to it. So you can, instead of getting a thousand as a literal, you'll get it as an integer. Okay. Um, you would obviously want to remove value, and you can remove value by calling local storage dot remove item, which takes in again a key value. And uh, the last API is uh, clearing all the values. So where would you use uh, a local storage? Well, local storage can be used in a web application where you could uh, preserve uh, settings initiated by a user. You want the screen size to be saved, you want the resolution to be saved, or if your web application is a game, you can store the scores, the highest scores um, in the local storage and retrieve it the next time the user starts your application. But it's pretty cool. You don't have to. You don't need a server to do all the stuff. You can access local storage and get the data. Okay. Um, so hope, uh, I hope the session on HTML5 local storage was useful, and hope you will use these APIs supported by Encapsulator to generate some cool or hot web applications. And if you have any questions, please free to. Um, uh, uh, access the forum on App Up Developer, and there's an article on um, uh, the local storage and how to use. There's a sample code which, can, you, which you can just download and use and see how local storage works. Thank you, Bob. Sure, thanks, Ijual. I, I just want to go back to this one slide sure. here, your, your API definition, if people right. didn't catch it. Um, so you guys may want to take a, a screenshot of this. Um, I think the rest of what you showed in your code was just the error handling, you know, to check whether or not the um, actual WebKit used was going to support it. Um, so, so let me uh, ask you, and one thing you, thought, you said was really intriguing to me is that mm -hmm. a cookie it only allows for, I think you said, four kilobits of information? Kilobit, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's true. Yeah. So um, what can we expect here? How much information could you store? Um, uh, I would imagine uh, it's beyond four kilobits. Right, yeah, it's five megabytes of uh, information you can store with local storage. Wow, that's so, quite a different. Yep, yeah, yeah, quite different. And uh, you can, the other disadvantage with cookies is you can um, basically, users can disable cookies on a web browser or a web, web engine. Um, that's not true with local storage. So you can still use retrieve data and, uh, you know, that's the advantage over cookies. Fantastic. Well, great. All right, so thank you, Ujwal, and it looks like, Rhonda, we have another poll. All righty. Yes, we do. This is our last poll for today. So the question is, would you consider using the local storage feature of Intel App Up Collect, uh, Encapsulator useful? So basically, would you consider using this local storage feature of the Encapsulator? Yes, no, or it's not applicable. Yeah. I think Ujwal explained some good use cases if you wanted to store the state of a game. Um, maybe it's a checkpoint if somebody moves to a different level. Um, maybe it's a high score. Um, and also outside of games, we could look at if you're using something like a media player and somebody s stops or pauses a video or an audio file, and then when they uh, switch 
to another application and they have to launch that app again, I guess maybe even the state of uh, where you were in that application, such as where you were in that music file could be saved. Yeah, totally cool. All right, so we're going to close the poll now. It's been about a minute and share the results. So 100% says yes, they will consider <laughs> using the local storage. <laughs> All right. Well, fantastic. I think that was an easy answer then, finding it useful. Even the folks, the 13% that, that didn't find HTML5 as a good cross-platform development tool, I think it's useful. So that's cool. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to kick it back over to you. All right. And so it looks like, um, hold on here one second. I'm just switching my stuff. That I think that wraps up our show. And, you know, I, I hope everybody enjoyed this. I'm going to be honest. Um, Ron and I were thinking, how could we do this in webinar form? So we tried to take the format of our existing app up show and, and figure out a way to do this. So please let us know what you think of it. And if you'd like to see more of this kind of show done. Yeah, let us know because uh, I had a good time. You know, it was uh, it's definitely when you're when you're not able to. Uh, we've gotten used to the camera. We've gotten used to uh, talking with people, so it was a little different. But I really enjoyed the um, the content. I call them little tidbits, little nuggets that I got from Ujwal and Daniel. So I'm very excited to have them support us, and I'm excited for our audience. Thank you so much for you know tuning in, and hope to have you join us again. So, so Robbie, that's are, are there are, are there any other questions that we want to answer? Um, anything that you had in your queue? Well, actually, you know, we've been managing the queue, and uh, we we had uh, two questions that Daniel wanted to take uh, offline, and he addressed it with the person that asked the question. But other than that, um, we didn't get any other questions besides those two. They were very uh, specific that he wanted to address one on one. Well, fantastic. Well, that's great. So I guess it would be a wrap then for us. It would be a wrap. So I'm signing off as your host, Rhonda Peters. And I'm your co-host, Bob Duffy. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.